So welcome back to another video on the channel. In this video, I'm gonna do a beginner's tutorial, a screen share tutorial on how to edit 360 footage from your Insta360 X3 camera on your desktop computer. So I'm gonna jump over to my screen here. I've got a video already ready to go and I'm gonna walk you through the entire interface of how Insta360's uh, studio app works, which is what you'll use to edit your 360 footage. It's gonna be completely beginner friendly. I'm gonna show you what all the different buttons and tools do in the app so you know exactly what to do when you get your camera and you wanna start editing some cool footage. So we'll head over to the computer now and you'll see here, I have open my footage and this is kind of like the interface you'll be met with and it's just really simple. And on the left here, you'll see the file name of at the file you've already imported. I've already imported mine just to speed up the video. And to import it, you basically just double click on the file that's inside your camera. And I'm gonna assume you've already transferred your footage from your camera to your computer. So we don't need to get into that. There's other videos on the channel showing you how to do that. So this is the video clip we're gonna be editing. And as you can see, it's a clip of me driving my van through the mountains with a friend holding the stick, the Insta360 stick out the window, the magic selfie stick. And my goal with this was to try and create like um, the feeling of like a drone following the van up the mountain. I thought it was a quite a cool shot to get. So we need to edit this in the app to make it look correct, okay? So whenever I'm editing footage, I always scan through the video to start with just to make sure it is what I'm after. And sometimes I'll only use maybe a snippet of a whole video. So this, this video clip is one minute, 37 seconds long. I don't think I'll use this whole clip in a, in a video, but it's probably quite good for a demonstration. And obviously you can click and drag the tracker pad around and we can use our fingers to pinch in and out. So he says, <laughs> okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually trim this first because we're not gonna use all of it. So we're gonna drag this white marker here to where we want the video to start. And you'll see here we've got a tab at the start and the end. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tab, pull the tab at the start to where we want our video to start. And let's just say we want a 20 second long clip. And we'll drag the end over. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now we have our workable, now we have our workable area of clip. What I like to do here is, I like to zoom in on the timeline a bit, just so we can see all the different keyframes and edits we're gonna make. So this is where this little tool here comes in handy. So we can just click the plus button and we can zoom in on our timeline. We can drag this as well, actually. And this will show us just a little bit more detail what it looks like. And we play this, you'll see, we had the van driving through the mountain. Okay, and we'll drag this back to start. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a keyframe to start with. So we're gonna click this plus button here and we're gonna add the keyframe. And a keyframe basically is where you'll make an initial adjustment to the camera. So once you have marked a keyframe on your timeline, your video, you then want to play about with these different tools here that will pop up to position your camera and your shot where you want it. So obviously we can do some cool things here. We can go crystal ball, tiny planet, and we go natural view. So this is going to give us uh, like no distortion on the lens. Cause obviously a 360 camera, you're gonna get a little bit of distortion on the lens. If you don't want that, then I'd probably go with natural view. If you want a little bit of distortion, you can go default. So you can see there, it's a little bit more 360 looking. So let's just say we're gonna have the van here. And have a play around with this, but you can you can literally adjust everything here. So we can just play around with the distortion. Get rid of the distortion. We can play around with the field of view. So this is obviously gonna adjust like how much, like this is gonna add basically more curvature to your footage, and which is what we just got rid of by clicking natural, or the neutral view, sorry. 
Then we have the roll angle. So this is going to play around with how much you roll your camera. You can obviously also play around with the, the settings just by the click of a mouse, which is probably easier. And if you hold the command key on a Mac, you can actually rotate the footage like this. Or if we let go, we can just zoom in and out just by two fingers on the tracker pad. Once you're happy though with where you want the keyframe, we're gonna decide where we want our next keyframe. So I think this mountain road has some turns in it, so it'd be quite nice to... So we're gonna move forward to the next keyframe. So we'll try and find... Okay, here we go. So we're kind of going around a corner now, but the van is kind of going out of shot. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna reposition the camera. We're gonna add another keyframe. And you'll see what happens now is the camera will transition between the two keyframes that we've just made. So we've played from the start. Awesome. And what we can do is we can also add another keyframe and we could pan around to maybe show what the actual landscape looks like as well as seeing the van. So we'll play that again from the second keyframe. You'll see it transitioning straight away. Move around. That was quite cool. So this is quite a advanced, well I wouldn't say advanced way of keyframing, but it's very tedious. So if you are somebody who wants to make real intricate edits and get really precise with a shot like this, then obviously the app gives you quite a lot of flexibility to do that. There is another cool way though in this app that you can create some uh, really cool tracking footage without doing all the keyframes. So what we'll do is we'll just keep the first keyframe and we've got a button here called deep track. And what we can do is we can click this and we can basically draw a box around our target and the AI in the software will actually try and keep that the center to target through the whole video. So if we draw a target around our van and then we click start tracking and just let it play through the footage. I'm gonna get a sip of coffee while it's doing that. Pretty damn cool. And I'll show you what the footage looks like in a second. Okay, let's play this again from the start or a snippet and I'll show you what, it's, what the AI tool has done. So it's done all this without me doing anything to the footage. And this is the power of Insta360 software. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And this is something that a GoPro can't do just yet. So this is why I think Insta360 cameras are currently better. So what else can we do? We can do time shift as well. So time shift is basically, I guess you can speed or slow down clips. So what we'll do is we'll keep our tracking as it was and we will add a time shift in the middle of our clip. It's real simple to do. We can drag this around depending on how fast or slow we want our footage to look. And let's just play this now and see what it does. Okay, so it's sped the clip up twice. Twice as fast and it's gonna slow it down back to normal speed. Brilliant. And what we can do here is, this is another great thing. So we can edit in the software as I am now in 16 by nine. So this is perfect for like a YouTube video. But let's say for instance, you want to edit and then you also want to share the same footage to social media. So you want like a portrait ratio. We can click this button and we can choose a different aspect ratio. We can choose nine by 16 and it will still keep all the edits you've just made, but in a different crop. So this is gonna save you a lot of time. You may need to make a few edits, but for the majority, it just looks pretty decent. So we'll just switch this back to 16 by nine for now. And what we can do as well, <clears throat> excuse me, we can take a snapshot as well. So if you find 
a particular frame that looks pretty decent for a snapshot, we can click this and we can save a snapshot image straight to our computer. Kind of cool. We can switch to full screen mode. I don't really use that. I like having the interface like this. And then let's just check out a few of the other tools that we have down the side here on the right. So there's a number of different editing tools here we can use. So first of all, we've got stabilization type. And for me, I prefer to always keep the flow state stabilization on. Directional lock, this will obviously lock the camera in a particular angle. But because we've already got keyframes and all this other editing going on in our timeline, I think it actually confuses the system. So if you want to use directional lock, it's probably the best thing to use it without putting any keyframes in to start with. I don't really use it that much, I just keep it as it is. We then also have the stitching. So we've obviously got options here that if you are underwater or above water, or you're shooting in like a watery location, you can turn this on for the stitching because obviously if there's water running on the lens of the camera, things need to be processed a little bit differently and the AI software will do all this for you if you don't do anything. Um, you may have a sticky lens guard as well, so this look like offsets the, the image, so we just keep it normal. I don't actually use a lens cover, which I should really get. And dynamic stitching, I haven't really played around with too much actually. I just literally leave it as it is. And if we click, click calibrate, it will just almost like reset things back to the original. It actually almost makes the footage look a little bit crisper as well. It's probably worth clicking the calibrate when you're stitching things together. And then we have media processing. So there's a couple of little editing tools we have in here, which is more to do with color. And we can enhance the color there by clicking color plus. That, that gives like the contrast a little bit more of a darker feel, probably a little bit more saturated, it looks like. We can also include, in, include increase the clarity. Unless we can't turn both of those on. That's interesting. I quite like that. More clarity. And then Aquavision is more for when you are shooting underwater, which we don't really need. And we can also choose between voice focus and noise reduction. So if you are shooting outside like I am, you may not want all the wind noise that comes along with that. Or you may be shooting in a scenario where you want the voice of a person to be the focus rather than the background noise. So the AI will actually figure out where to base most of the audio dominance. So we click noise reduction. And you'll see it's trying to reduce the wind noise. Interesting. We've obviously got a logo setting tab as well. So I don't know why you would, but you can add the Insta360 logo to your footage to show people what it was shot on, increase the size of it. I don't, I don't know why you would have a logo on, to be honest with you, but I hate the options there if you want the logo. Then we have a project management tab. So this is probably quite useful if you want to start organizing different projects. So we can create a new project and we can navigate between projects and timelines. So it's, it's kind of useful when you're editing multiple clips and you want to navigate quickly between those clips. And then we have the file properties. This is just giving us an overview of the file size, the frame rate was shot on, the bit rate, everything like that. And the file size is quite useful. So let's have a look at the left hand side of the tab here and we'll look at the export process so you can take the, your edited video and transfer it to your computer whilst keeping the quality as high as possible. So over here we can adjust how things look and these are all our files we've imported, favourites and we've got exports here obviously be empty until I export things. Now once you're happy with your video and you want to export, we're going to click this yellow button in the right hand corner and we'll click start export and it's going to give us a couple of options to choose from. And what I would suggest you do if you want to 
export your video in the highest quality possible, I would probably increase the bitrate. Now obviously increasing the bitrate will increase the file size, so if you are quite strapped for space on your computer or your phone, then probably keep this maybe around 50. But the general rule from the higher the bitrate, the higher quality your video is going to come out. And resolution obviously, um, in the 360 camera, we were shooting this footage at 5.7K. But that doesn't mean we're gonna get 5.7K video footage because 5.7K is, is spread out around the whole 360 camera. So just remember that. And resolution I just keep as it is. And this is for like a standard YouTube video. You'll probably swap those around if you wanted to export it as a portrait video. So 1080 by 1920. And then encoding format, if you're editing on a Mac, which I am, I probably just keep it H.264. ProRes is obviously a massive file if you're doing some more editing of things. And then just simply click export. And you'll see on the left here, there'll be like a, a progress bar. It'll give you the percentage down here. And it's exporting, it's exporting actually quite fast. I thought it would be exporting quite, quite slow. Some of the edits we've done. So we'll just let it do its thing and we'll see what the finished product looks like. We get a nice noise and we navigate over to export history and we have our final video. Here it is. You can see it adds a little bit of motion blur as well, which you actually won't see when you're editing in the app, which is a good thing to note. Any motion blur doesn't really show up in the app. As soon as you export it, you can see here on the time shift, um, it's quite evident when it speeds up there's a bit of motion blur which we didn't see when we were editing and that's it that is a beginner's guide or tutorial on how to edit 360 footage in the insta360 studio i was using the insta360 x3 camera and if you're watching this you've probably already got one of these cameras but if you haven't and you want to grab yourself a camera with a bunch of free bonuses and free gifts there's a link below that will take you directly to my affiliate store and you can grab one of these with some cool goodies and some money off. So hope it was useful. Any comments on editing 360 videos, pop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you.